Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the topic transcription and post transcription modifications. So transcription is a process by which the information present on DNA is copied in the form of RNA for formation of proteins. Let's first see the requirements for transcription. The first requirement is the presence of transcription unit, which is the segment of DNA which is involved in the process of transcription. This transcription unit is divided into three parts based on its role. The first part is called the promoter region, which is present in the upstream region with respect to coding strand. This promoter region consists of conserved sequences which are recognized by the enzyme RNA polymerase. These conserved sequences are the regions which are rich in AT base pairs. Some of these conserved sequences are Pribna box in prokaryotes, which consists of six nucleotides. Another type is Tata box, or also called Hognes box which consists of repeating units of DNA nucleotides and cat box in eukaryotes. The second part is the structural gene. One of the strand of structural gene is called the template strand or non-coding strand. This strand is in 3' to 5' polarity with respect to position of promoter. As a transcription, just like replication, is also a template dependent process. So new nucleotides are added for RNA formation in 5' to 3' direction based on complementary base pairing using the sequence of non-coding strand as template. Hence, this strand is also called the template strand. The other strand of the structural gene, which has 5' to 3' polarity with respect to position of promoter and is called coding strand. The reason for calling this strand as the coding strand is that the RNA formed has exact same sequence and polarity, which is 5' to 3' direction, as that of the coding strand. The only difference here is that in place of thymine, RNA consists of uracil bases. The last part of the transcription unit is terminator, which is the site where the transcription stops. The next requirement is nucleotide triphosphate or NTPs. These NTPs are of four types depending on the nitrogenous base attached to it. Adenosine triphosphate or ATP, guanosine triphosphate GTP, cytidine triphosphate CTP and uridine triphosphate UTP. Other than acting as substrate for polymerization, these NTPs also provides the energy for polymerization by breaking off the high energy bonds between two phosphate groups. Certain enzymes are also required. The enzyme RNA polymerase is also one of the requirements and is also called DNA dependent RNA polymerase. This enzyme is responsible for the addition of NTPs for RNA formation. Prokaryotes have only one type of RNA polymerase which transcribes all three types of RNA that is mRNA, rRNA as well as tRNA. While eukaryotes have three types of RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2 and RNA polymerase 3 which performs different tasks. Few proteins called sigma factor and rho factors are also required. Sigma factor helps in the initiation of transcription by attaching to the RNA polymerase and helping it recognize the conserved sequences of promoter. The rho factor helps in termination by binding to the terminator site and releasing the primary transcript. Now let's see the mechanism of transcription which is divided into three main steps. The first step is initiation. Binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter region is facilitated by sigma factor. In absence of sigma factor, RNA polymerase binds non-specifically to the DNA and starts transcription randomly at any site. The second step is called elongation. The sigma factor is not required for the elongation and is released from the RNA polymerase after initiation. The RNA polymerase now moves in 3' to 5' direction with respect to the template strand and adds nucleotide by using NTPs as substrate. This is done by complementary base pairing. As the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator site, rho factors bind to the RNA polymerase and stops the transcription process. The RNA chain thus formed is called the primary transcript and this process is the final step and is called termination. In prokaryotes, the structural gene consists of only coding regions or the functional parts and both transcription and translation occurs in the cytoplasm itself. So no further processing is required for the primary transcript. But in case of eukaryotes, the structural gene is made up of both coding as well as non-coding regions called exons and introns respectively. And the site of transcription and translation is nucleus and cytoplasm respectively. So further processing of this primary transcript is required and this process is called post-transcription modifications. So let's see what are the changes that occurs in the primary transcript before moving it into the cytoplasm for translation. 
The first step is addition of a 7-methylguanosine triphosphate to the 5' end of the primary transcript. This process is called capping and this is performed by the activity of enzyme guanyl transferase. The 5' cap addition is important as it helps to recognize the smaller subunit of ribosomes at the time of translation. The next step is tailing which is the addition of a long chain of adenosine monophosphate residues which results in the formation of a polyadenyl tail. Enzyme polyadenylate polymerase is responsible for this activity. The step is important as it protects the RNA from 3' to 5' exonuclease activity. And the last step is splicing. So the primary transcript form has both functional and non-functional regions in it. Hence, the primary transcript is also called heterogeneous nuclear RNA or HNRNA. Splicing is defined as the process of removal of introns from the primary transcript or the HNRNA to form a functional mRNA having only exons. This is performed by the help of small nuclear RNAs called SNRNA and small nuclear ribonucleoproteins called SNRNPs or SNPs. Both SNRNA and SNPs recognizes the ends of introns and binds to it resulting in the formation of a complex called spliceosomes. Introns are then cut from the RNA and removed while all the exons are joined by the DNA ligase to form a functional mRNA.